This video will explain multitask curriculum learning in a complex, visual, hard exploration domain, Minecraft. So as a quick overview of the presentation of this paper, we're going to start off with some quick takeaways looking at the final different curriculums that were proposed to discover these items in the Minecraft environment. And then we'll talk about reinforced learning, curriculum learning, and multitask learning uh, more generally, this idea of having uh, task dependency where you have to learn to, say, add before you do calculus, and these kind of dependencies with multitask learning and reinforced learning. And then we'll discuss how they measure learnability as the change in success probability and some problems with just uh, using it as raw uh, success probability. And then we'll look at their exploration bonus and the issues with goal conditioning. Goal conditioning is where, say, the policy is not only conditioning its action prediction on the state, but also the goal is given as the input. So it's the prediction of the action given the state goal as the inputs and some problems that might arise with doing this in the curriculum learning setting or generally with doing this in any kind of multitask evolving curriculum style of training these agents. So then we'll talk more about the Minecraft environment and this Simon Says task for you know how you uh, you know craft these items and learn to discover new items in the Minecraft game. Uh, and then again coming back to the quick takeaways we'll recap with the curriculums that are tested how they do this you know, intra episode and then a cross training exploration bonus in addition to the Simon Says goal conditioning uh, curriculum learning. So it's a really interesting overall framework of combining exploration with this goal of curriculum learning. It's a very interesting framework. And then they uh, list some potential extensions for future work. And then we'll recap this you know, scope of this extremely exciting research on POET, the paired open ended trailblazers algorithm, how it's extended to be more general, AI generating algorithms, and then you know, overall thinking about where this might lead to. It's really exciting, you know, ideas of open-ended algorithms and then now with the resources of open AI and thinking about what could happen with this. So this figure provides a great high-level overview of the different curriculum learning slash exploration strategies that are explored in this paper. So we start off with this red line where the agent only discovers 17 out of the 107 items in Minecraft in the assignment says, you know, the set of items to discover by just doing uniform sampling. And what this means with uniform sampling is that at the start of each uh, episode, the agent is given, you know, with equal probability, one out of the 107 items as the goal where it will receive a reward only for reaching that item given as the goal. So this is compared with this exploration bonus. So in the exploration bonus, even if the goal is, say, uh, craft a diamond or build a sword. I don't really know too much about Minecraft, but even if it's this more ambitious task, the agent will still receive some reward initially from, uh, you know, picking at the dirt and then collecting dirt or picking at a rock and, you know, doing these easier tasks. It'll still receive some reward and have some learning signal to, you know, update its parameters and kind of learn what it's doing a little bit. So then the, uh, you know, the yellow dotted line is this dynamic exploration bonus. So if the, if the Minecraft agent is just picking at the dirt and getting dirt, it shouldn't just keep getting the exploration bonus for that. So this dynamic exploration bonus is adjusting this based on kind of the difficulty of the overall items within this exploration bonus. So even though throughout this, it's always, you know, the main reward is from doing the Simon Says task, which could be, uh, you know, go get the diamond or whatever is on the cutting edge of that curriculum that's being designed. And then the, you know, it has this exploration bonus as it discovers other kinds of items throughout its like building up its inventory to craft these things and you know how the game of Minecraft works. So uh, then this is showing the benefit of adding this curriculum. So in the yellow line and the green line, it's still a uniform sampling of the uh, of the goal condition policy of the Simon Says task. Now we have an actual learning curriculum where the frontier of the items, like the most ambitious items are being presented as the goal. And then you see this catastrophic forgetting problem. This is like this notorious problem in deep learning where if you train a model on task A, then task B, then task C, by the time it's learned task C, it'll, it will no longer be able to achieve task A. And it's one of this, these interesting things about deep learning that doesn't make too much sense, but this catastrophic forgetting problem is you know, very evident. You see it with these huge dips in the performance. So then the dotted blue that performs the best is combining the bi-directional. So when it drops, you also assign that as the Simon Says task, as well as his exploration bonus. And we'll get more into the details of this you know, in this video. So here's another detail about the studies that is listed at the bottom of the caption of this figure, is that each run takes 21 days on 32 GPUs. So I, I think that's just interesting always to see the, you know, the computation time requirements, 32 GPUs, 21 days, pretty interesting seeing that that's what it takes to run out each of these, you know, it looks like 50,000 optimization steps for each of these episodes of Minecraft. So now let's break down the high level motivation of the study in this overall framework of curriculum learning. Curriculum learning is a really intuitive idea of thinking about learning where you obviously would need to learn to add or subtract and multiply before you do more complex things like calculus or, you know, learning about gradient descent and these ideas of 
these natural things that you learn to walk before you run, high school level before college level physics, this idea of having these tasks that build upon each other. But interestingly in deep learning, say in supervised learning, you just have these expert demonstrations of what the you know top level looks like and then you usually just sample a large batch. So even if, if some examples aren't really learnable, you have this large batch. So at least there's some learning signal in the large batch and so on. That's kind of how you overcome curriculum learning. And then also there's this interesting problem again of catastrophic forgetting where you might not even, it's not even that they build on each other, you might have forgotten this old task. So it's interesting thinking about these kind of like stepping stones of learning tasks and how in our deep neural network models, they don't really you know, adhere to this kind of learning schedule where you think any model that can say, uh, like summarize a scientific article with this abstractive sequence to sequence uh, supervised learning framework should also have like a basic sense of natural language inference, but really the models, you know, if you evaluate it on that, it would have no sense of natural language inference. So tasks often vary in difficulty and depend on each other, such that learning easier tasks first may help with learning more difficult tasks later. And then curriculum learning can speed up learning by focusing on the next best task to learn, narrowing the distribution of tasks being trained onto those that are currently learnable. So instead of having this, you know, long training schedule, maybe we can improve the efficiency and it wouldn't take 21 days to, you know, just run this experiment, but generally running say a GPT-3 model or, you know, training these vision transformers also takes a long time. It may be curriculum learning is the answer for how we can avoid these long training schedules. So again, there's this idea relating the problem of exploration with these expert demonstrations and supervised learning. And probably most interestingly at the end, there's this paragraph about, a uh, sentence about if the model relies purely on imitating humans, its maximum performance will be limited by the best demonstrations in our data set. And even the combination of all the best demonstrations that humanity has to offer probably will not move the model far beyond human performance. So this idea of having super intelligence or some kind of super performance on say tasks like, you know, in this case, we're looking at Minecraft or maybe even more open-ended tasks, like as we'll look at next, things like, you know, in the visual natural language domains, that if it sidesteps the exploration problem, all we'll be able to achieve is the ceiling of these supervised demonstrations. And things like, say, you know, AlphaGo and how it plays against itself, it leaves this idea of uh, just supervised learning and imitation learning, behavioral cloning, these ideas. And instead, it has this open-ended idea of exploration. And that's kind of the idea behind curriculum learning is trying to find these stepping stone uh, objectives for exploring the environment and finding some kind of way to do something new like novelty search and intrinsic motivation. So when we're thinking about tasks, we can think about things like reward functions and environment distribution. So say when we have the uh, POET experiment with the bipedal walking agents, we might describe the environment distributions as the meta parameters that render the environments that the agents then walk on. So say uh, how bumpy, how many hills are on the you know terrain, how many uh, ditches there are, how frequent they are, how deep they are, whether the agent has to jump over things and if there are hurdles like that, how tall are they and so on. These would be like the meta parameters of the environment distribution. Or say you have the paper from OpenAI uh, solving a Rubik's Cube with a robot hand, where the environment parameters are like the physics coefficients on the cube or the visual parameters like the lighting, the color of the cube, all these different ideas. These are kind of like parameters that would make up an environment distribution. So in this particular case of Minecraft, we're looking at tasks with identical environment distributions. You're always in uh, Minecraft and you probably have the same you know distribution of whether you're in like the jungle or the woods or the beach or something like that but then there are different rewards or Simon says it's giving you a different reward for which item you're trying to go achieve and they uh, make the analogy with these other kind of tasks where say you're writing programs like the code the codex thing summarizing books like GPT-3 answering questions like GPT-3 or generating images like maybe image GPT or style gain or one of these things they all have these universal environments of vision or language. So I think it's interesting. I've never seen that kind of framing of thinking about vision or language as a universal environment where you're performing these different tasks in these different kinds of environments. So it's an interesting kind of way of thinking about, you know, reward functions and environment distributions and thinking about what kind of these things really are that make up the framework of reinforcement learning and environments, state, you know, state actions, reward signals, and all these kind of ideas. So to come back to the focus on curriculum learning, the naive solution to trying to learn, you know, this Minecraft world of crafting these items would be to try to learn all tasks simultaneously by uniformly sampling the tasks. So with equal probability, you assign any of the items as being what the agent will see, receive a reward for achieving. Compared to curriculum learning, we're going to try to organize the, you know, the order in which you receive a reward for crafting different items as well as having the explicit instruction with the goal conditioning to go and you know, get this reward.
A key technical detail of these curriculum learning algorithms are going to be to define learnability. What is the technical proxy that we use to say that one task is more learnable than another and that it should be at the frontier of the curriculum that we're presenting to the agent. So the authors are going to use the change in success probability and that means you know the difference in success probability between these different time steps that we'll discuss more later. But here are the problems with just using raw success probability compared to the change in success probability. So the initial state of the environment could be randomized and this could highly bias the signal. So say the task is, I don't know, to collect uh, some particular kind of object but and then you respawn right next to the object to begin the episode compared to where you uh, respawn or initialized far away from it and you have to go and find the area as well as whatever else you have to do. So then it you know, generally depends on the task, initial state, and learning stage of the agent to just have success probability. And then you could have stochastic environments. So some tasks may have an intermediate success probability, like you have 50% success, but it isn't learnable because it's completely random how it's determined you know, whether you're successful or not. So then with respect to measuring the uh, change and the change in uh, success probability, you have these two kind of ideas, the delta t, which is if it's too small, then you just have the slope of the noise. If it's you know a small time step, small number of episodes that have been attempted, then you just have the slope of the noise. And if it's too large, then you're going to miss the recent changes in the success probability. So then another idea is to have an exponential moving average of the trend rather than just individual snapshots. So you could have a noisy estimate and having this exponential moving average would help have a better sense of the uh, curve of the learning curve. So these are two very important details of you know, practically implementing these curriculum learning ideas. So with the strategy of inferring learnability, the authors are now going to have a sampling function where 90% of the weight are going to be on the 20% of the task with the largest reweighted learning progress. And I recommend checking out the papers for more details on the reweighted learning progress and these ideas of the delta t exponential moving average, and these other little ideas of uh, details of how you're inferring the learnability with this change in success probability as you're training the model. So now that we have a sense of how the learning curriculum is defined with the change in success probability, we'll break into some issues with goal conditions conditioning and how we have to introduce this expiration bonus to further help with the learning of this uh, curriculum of tasks. So this idea of goal condition learning is where the reinforced learning agent is predicting its action given as input the state as well as the goal. So the goal in this case is a one hot encoded vector that represents one of the 107 Minecraft items. So some vector like 0010000 is put as input as well as the state to help the you know model guide itself to this particular goal. And so the problem with this is in the initialization, it receives this new one hot encoded vector. It has no embedding for it, and it has no idea how to use it. It doesn't know how it relates to the previously learned behaviors right away, and it doesn't know this relationship. So it doesn't know how to interpret the new goal, and therefore you need some other way of kind of smoothening it out and introducing this new objective to the curriculum and the you know learning of the agent. So as previously mentioned, the solution to this is to add an expiration bonus. So if the agent is being tasked with making a diamond, uh, or making a diamond helmet, if it achieves something like uh, getting the dirt or a bowl or a ladder or something or logs or planks, it'll still receive some reward for doing that. But then the way that this uh, reward is dynamic is that if you just keep getting dirt or you just keep crafting bowls, the reward that you're receiving will decay exponentially or some you know curve like that. So that's how they're structuring this expiration bonus that helps with transitioning to some new goals. And here's a table that shows overall the 107 Minecraft items that the agent is being asked to uh, get throughout the training. So before going back to the results, the Minecraft environment is a very interesting environment for reinforced and learning. We've previously seen these uh, open environments like OpenAI Gym or Mujoko or say the Atari games, but the Minecraft environment does seem to be pretty different in the way that it has this, you know, it has this visual processing, uh, like other things like Atari does have a visual pixel frame, but this has a spatial awareness where you do have like the 360 degrees around the agent as you look around the Minecraft environment. And then there's the inferring causality and conducting experiments idea where you have to figure out how to craft the items and then which items would go together, I think, in the crafting. But again, I don't know too much about Minecraft, but it does seem to be a fundamentally different platform for you know doing this research with this these reinforcement learning agents. And then there's this tech tree with many dependencies. And this is an interesting idea that I think connects back to this code codex idea. And, really interesting ideas of building on this tech tree thing. So then one other interesting detail is that they have a maximum episode length of 30 minutes, 9,000 time steps. This is how long the agent can explore the environment to achieve the Simon Says reward. If you're completely unfamiliar with the Minecraft environment, I highly recommend watching this video that the authors of the paper have published that shows what the Minecraft task is, how it uh, collects these different things and crafts these items, and exploring this Simon Says, and then really looking into the episodes of the agent. So really interesting visualization of these experiments. So here's a quick reminder of the different learning strategies that are tested in this paper. 
The red line is uniform sampling, where you uniformly sample a Simon Says task and only achieving this item will result in any reward for the agent. The green dotted line is where you still uniformly sample this, uh, the main goal and the goal conditioned uh, policy, but you also have an expiration bonus. So if it finds dirt or crafts a bowl, these kind of easier tasks, I imagine, it'll still receive some reward in the beginning. And the difference between fixed and dynamic is in fixed, it may get stuck in this local optimum where it just keeps crafting bowls because it keeps receiving the reward. Or maybe even though there's an exponential decay, you can have different hyperparameters that control that decay and so on, the, the, you know, drilling into the details of this. And then the dynamic expiration bonus is where it looks not only within the episode of having the decay within as it keeps crafting bowls, but then across the run. So as it's done 10,000 optimization steps, you would just say the bias on the decay or the initial reward for a bowl, dirt, or like a gold sword or whatever else there is. So then the uh, learning curriculum, this is structuring the, you know, the Simon Says task, the goal condition policy. So the light blue is the problem of catastrophic forgetting, whereas it keeps learning these things, it's forgotten how to do, you know, the earlier uh, items. And then this is the bi-directional progress where if it forgets substantially, then you pivot back and have the forgotten task go back on the frontier, having the magnitude of the change in the success probability, not only positive changes. So some more details on the results. Uh, these plots are coloring the success probability for each of these different uh, tasks throughout training the uniform uh, task, never achieving any success on these ones with the uh, bi-directional curve and then the unidirectional curve reaching deeper into the tech tree of the Minecraft items. And this is the plot showing the sampling. So uniform sampling, obviously it selects all of it uniformly compared to how the learning curriculum is sampling the task. And then this plot is showing uh, overall the state of how this is being evaluated. So the agent doesn't need to achieve, say this, uh, golden sword over and over again. It just needs to do it with some probability of success. So this is coloring the probability of success for this uh, top agent that it does achieve 82 of these items. So the red ones, it doesn't achieve. The green ones, it achieves uh, greater than 5% success. So pretty low bar, but still interesting that it achieves any of the items. And then overall, this Minecraft environment it does seem pretty incredible that it's able to uh, navigate it and achieve these items. So this is uh, coloring and showing that low success probabilities are uh, what's needed to qualify on adding to the items discovered in these experiments. As some background to contextualize why these experiments are so exciting, uh, Jeff Kloon published this really interesting paper titled AI GAs, AI Generating Algorithms. So this is the idea of having an AI that can generate AI, so an algorithm that produces intelligence, so, sort of like the Earth simulation kind of idea, this idea. And it's kind of also, it's a little more uh, detail-oriented than, say, the open-ended algorithms idea, where it's, kind of generally describes these ideas of novelty search, intrinsic motivation, and then say, uh, like the idea of what kind of algorithm would be interesting if you left it running for a million years. So like not image net optimization, it would be something like uh, Poet or these Minecraft environments or the simulation of Earth is the motivating example behind these open-ended algorithms. So the AI generating algorithms are described as having these three pillars, meta-learning the architectures, meta-learning the learning algorithms themselves, and then generating the effective learning environment. So I think of this Minecraft thing as being the third pillar of generating the effective learning environments. Other experiments like Poet, this is where you have this co-evolutionary framework between the agents that are learning to control a bipedal walking agent, as well as the environments that they walk on. So you're generating the learning environment for the agent and where it's doing its learning for controlling the bipedal uh, walking robot. And then you have these other things like generative teaching networks and also a synthetic petri dish where you generate the training data. So you're generating the supervised learning data and it looks nothing like real MNIST digits, but this is used to train a model that's evaluated on the MNIST data set. And then also kind of relate, not, that, not necessarily in a learning environment, this is more on the second pillar, or the first pillar on meta learning architectures. But this is trying to find a solution to this catastrophic forgetting, some kind of neural architecture search that could design an architecture that avoids this problem of catastrophic forgetting, which is an interesting kind of component to these curriculums and these the sequential task learning and so on. So overall, these really interesting ideas of how AI and algorithm can create AI and what's necessary for building intelligence. Thank you so much for watching this explanation of multitask curriculum learning in a complex visual hard exploration domain, Minecraft. This is a really exciting idea for combining this learning curriculum with the change in success probability with this intra episode and inter episode and intra episode expiration bonus as you have this additional reward signal for just discovering items that decays over time and also depends on the current learning stage of the agent as well as the Simon says task and the main goal of doing something challenging like 
uh, crafting a gold sword, particularly the game of Minecraft. This is a really exciting environment for testing these reinforcement learning algorithms. And overall, I expect really exciting things to come out of this research. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.